good morning friends today we are going to learn module number 3 comedy of errors by william shakespeare in the last lecture we learn about adaptation as interpretation which is a module second and you learn what is adaptation as interpretation now we are going to learn comedy of errors by william shakespeare what is the story and plot outline of the play the play opens with the arrest of an old man called igion he was a syracusian that is a man of the enemy state or ephesus that was why he was arrested according to the law of the country a syracusian found on the soil of ephesus was punishable he died if he was not able to pay the ransom old igune was a stranger to this city so there was no hope of raising the ransom money he was fated to die of hanging but solinus the duke of ephesus was not a cruel man he took pity on the poor old man and asked him to tell why and how he a man of syracus happened to be in ephesus igone began to narrate his story i am a merchant for from syracus when i was young i lived happily my wife loved me i used to go on business voyages my wife was pregnant and you for delivery i was worried about her but i could not leave the voyage incomplete so i called her where i was she came there safely and soon i was the proud father of identical twin sons as luck would have it a poor farmer's wife delivered another pair of identical sons but the farmer was too poor to be able to take good care of them so i bought the twin they would make good servants to my two sons i thought a few days later we started homeward because emilia my wife insisted on our way we were caught in the storm our ship could not survive the storm sensing the danger we divided the children among us the division was such that we tied one son and one adopted son on our backs luckily we found a spare mast on the boat then holding the two ends of the mast in our hands she on one end and i on the other we hurled ourselves in the sea and floated on the waves we were being wafted towards epidamnum i thought but we were not lucky our mast struck a rock and split into two Emilia piece Emilia's piece being lighter drifted away quickly from me I saw her being lifted up by some boat that was the last time I saw her later another boat saved us and brought us back to Syracuse this was some 25 years ago my son grew up to manhood now he started inquiring about his brother finally he decided to set out in search of his twin brother and i could not stop him he went but did not return i awaited him for 7 years and then unable to bear the pangs of separation set out to look for him i had been to so many places that i lost count of my whereabouts now I am here in Ephesus and a prisoner doomed to die. I am not sorry for death. It would be a very welcome relief for me that I have no more to search and be frustrated. The duke was moved by this tragic tale. He allowed him a period till sunset to find out any friend or a helper, raise the money and save himself. the man set out hopefully to raise the ransom money coincidentally 
all the six members of igunis family were in ephesus but they were unaware of one another's presence this was going to produce a lot of fun of misunderstanding and confusion in the play antipolus and dromio of syracus were in ephesus antipolus sent his servant dromio to the centaur to keep the money safely there you will find me in the mart i will look about and study the manners of the people here he told dromio who left on his order ordered mission soon dromio of ephesus arrived antipholus was surprised to see him back so soon and asked what he did with the money dromio did not understand it he had come to take him home for me his wife andrina was waiting for his return and he was late for his food what was this entire joke about antipholus was unmarried and a stranger there how could he have a wife and a home he got angry and beat dromio who ran away he went home to inform andrina wife wife of antipholus of ephesus about it she got angry at this strange cruel joke and sent him back to bring her husband home in the meantime dromio second returned to him informed that the money was safely deposited and tifolus asked him if his mood of humor was over what mood what humor and tifolus reminded him of how he talked of his wife dromio denied having said so and was bitten again and tifolus had heard that this place was infected with ghosts goblins magicians and sorcerers now he felt certain that it was a fact and now the very woman who claimed to be his wife andrina came there accompanied by her sister luciana when romeo told andrina that antipholus denied marriage she was furious luciana tried to talk some sense in her sister but andrina was a shrew with a nagging tongue she always found faults with her husband and scolded him whenever she got a chance luciana tried to tell her that she should refrain from using her husband like a trash a husband must be revered and respected a wife must look after him keep him happy and free from family cares she used to tell her sister but it had no effect on andrina she continued to be full of doubt full of doubt about antipholus she suspected that her husband was in love with some other woman and she would not tolerate that she would teach him a lesson that he will remember all his life it was in this mood that she set out to bring antipholus home and made antipholus of syracus he tried to tell her that he did not even know her why he knew nobody in the land but all his argument was wasted on her she ordered him to follow her home without delay antipholus had to obey in the first place he was a stranger and so helpless secondly he would not like a row and a scene a scene in the street in broad daylight on reaching home andrina ordered dromio to guard the door why she and her husband took food he was not to admit anybody in any case whoever the person and the person who did appear at the door was the real husband of andrina antipholus of ephesus he was not alone he had brought his friends and leo a goldsmith and balthazar a fellow merchant with him for lunch of course tromio was with them antipholus had heard how he had denied marriage with andrina how he beat tromio for showing surprise and how he was late for his lunch he was aware that the atmosphere at home must be boiling so he had also prepared a story to tell andrina he was delayed he would tell 
all the shop of Angelo, where he went to see a gold chain for his wife, and yet he expected some angry, nagging <coughs> remarks from his wife. He, however, never expected that he would be denied entry into his own house and would be locked out. No wonder he was surprised to see the door locked on him. He called out to open it and was told that the door would not be opened to anybody till the master of the house, who was taking food inside, had completed his lunch. What nonsense! There was the master standing outside and calling for the door to open. How could he be inside and taking his food with his wife? His repeated requests, appeals and orders fell on deaf ears. Dromeo told them from inside that he was ordered not to open the door and he won't. Furious Antipholus asked Dromeo to procure an axe. He would break open the door. How could Andrina dare to keep him out of his own house? But Balthazar calmed him, saying that this would seriously affect his family life. Instead of insisting on forcing the door open, he should walk with him to his home and share his food, pleaded Balthazar. Antipholus became quiet but suggested the third way. There was a woman, a prostitute, but a good wench. She would never deny him entry and food in her house. They would go to her, he suggested. He even took a decision of giving the gold chain which he had purchased for Andrina to the wench. In the house of Antipholus, a from Ephesus, <coughs> a different drama was taking place. Luciana was finding it difficult to keep Antipholus, her sister's husband, at hand's distance. He was flirting with her and showing signs of love for her. This had never happened before. It was a dangerous game, she thought. She reminded him that Andrina was his wife, even if he did not like her, because she is shrew, even though he had married her only for her money. He should not left he should not let her see his mind on his face and should avoid such behavior. She said he does not pay much attention to her warning, for as she believed he was not Andrina's husband. The fact was the Antipolus of Syracuse had fallen in love with Luciana at first sight. Like Luciana Dromeo, Second, too, was in difficulty, Andrina's cook, who was the lover of Dromeo, from Ephesus, was after him. Though he had never seen her before, he found this large, sweetest square woman intolerable as he be his beloved. He described her to his master, adding that he could find various countries on her body. For example, he tells Antipholus, Second, that he could see Ireland on her buttocks and France on her forehead. Obviously, prom promptly and willingly followed Antipholus when he left Andrina and her house after food. Antipholus now was certain that the place was infested with ghosts. He would not stay there, there, there any longer, so he sent his Romeo to find out if the wind was favorable and if there was any boat leaving the coast. He also asked him to bring a piece of rope to the to tie the luggage. At that moment, Angelio, the goldsmith, came and addressed him as Master Antipholus. Antipholus was surprised to find a total stranger calling him by his name. To add to his surprise, the goldsmith gave him the gold chain ordered by him and the fullers offered him money for that and the goldsmith said that he should take the chain and pay him later. He would ask when he needed money. He accepted the chain and the goldsmith Angelio left. It is a 
part of the story this two parts first we are going we learned that the first part of the story that how the igune from sirakus came to ephesus in search of his son and the next part how all the six members are in the city of, of ephesus in the next lecture we will see about the next part of the plot of the play here we end today thank you